Hey everyone, Ink here uh, to fix this disaster. <laughs> uh, yeah, I originally did this with Squall at three uh, and Porum at base EX, so six ingots, but now is the time to fix it now that I lucked into Squall's burst in LD. Uh, I'm gonna be running this on four ingots with uh, Kate Sith at zero. I finally pulled his banner more so that I could uh, MLB his stuff. I've wanted to run him in this stage for a long time and finally using my 1-3 Lilla set. She's the only character I have that's uh, not zero or three out of three. So four ingots. Uh, this stage will be demonstrating board creep. <laughs> um, yeah, the boards really, really help. Uh, and I think this stage is prime for people to, uh, to reset. Uh, so Ferris is providing dispel. Uh, and damage. That is her main main thing here. Lila Set is debuffing battery. Aura Kate Sith is providing a ton of battery, uh, and the team in general, Lily and Kate Sith, will be HP plusing a lot. So that's good. Uh, and uh, yeah, Kate. Uh, I I love how useful he is at a at zero three. So this run is dedicated to Dreamy. Dreamy just uh, ended his Kate Sith saga. Uh, I think he's going to keep running Kate Sith, but not necessarily for every event. He ran him from Abyss, uh, the FF7 banner, until <laughs> the challenge quest. He did every single chaos with Kate Sith. So anyone that was saying that he was lacking or anything like that, uh, yeah, you should check out some of his runs. I'll link it in the description. But anyway, figured I'd use this video to banter a little bit because, oh my gosh, this run is 130 turns. So I sped it up 2x. Uh, the team HP plus is a ton. <laughs> you really just want to dispel the enemies whenever you need to uh, and just keep them broken. Uh, and Ferris's poison and Lilliset's sap certainly help out. Uh, so yeah, it, it ends up working out just fine. Uh, but yeah, uh, first thing I wanted to do is uh, thank everyone that gave us such wonderful comments on... Uh, on Reddit and, and Discord and everything about our new template. The the team worked so hard on it. Uh, we updated quite a lot. We explained in a blog post type of thing on our website why we made the changes we did. Uh, and I hope that I, it seemed like people were really, really receptive to that. I think the only thing that we got a bit of uh, uh, feedback about that people didn't like were the fact that we didn't have EX plus levels on Orin. Well, we had to remove it, uh, and the reason was is one, it takes a long time uh, for us to break out all those uh, all those updates. Uh, graphics take us about anywhere from ten to fifteen hours, so that it's quite a bit of time investment that we spend on it. And uh, yeah, I mean, we explained why we took them out, and also the fact that they were just confusing. So I mean, you can tell in this run, right? Like, I certainly appreciate. I'm the value of a zero three EX plus, but yeah, that's, that was <laughs> six months ago. We're at the point where pretty much if you're using a character, you want them at three, three, uh, especially with the advent of LD weapons and all. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, if you are planning to do a challenge quest, that's the best time to try and use a zero three and you should be using like Decidia info, and you should be trying the event before you go ahead and MLB a character just for a challenge quest. Challenge quests are not reasons to like pull or anything like that. Their return on investment is really, really low with just one burst token that's a whopping $3 of value. So yeah, uh, it's, it's just not appropriate for like one of our infographics to tell you about a challenge quest. That's where you should really leverage uh, Decidia info that Macknull runs um, and get a better idea of what people are using for various uh, various quests and all. Uh, that's that's certainly the best place. And also we link to Rem's website. Rem for Decidia DB. I don't know how much people realize how hard Rem also works to keep his database up to date for everybody. And yeah, I mean, why would we go and redo work that, that he's already done? Uh, it makes it makes a lot of sense, especially when, it, again, like I said, it was confusing people uh, just because the base EX was so weird. Like, look at Kane's graphic, look at Quistus's graphic. 
The base EX was literally a complete waste of space. It was totally useless. Um, but uh, yeah, so I hope that I hope that makes sense uh, to people. And if you uh, want to comment further on it or talk to us about it, join our join our Discord. We're not really going to hash things out terribly detail detailed on Reddit. Uh, it's not a good platform for it. So just jump in Discord. We have our own Discord uh, with that Quetz. Uh, gave us a of Materia Bot gave us a great place to chat. So come join it. We have a Tonberry chat. Uh, we also have a Patreon chat there. Uh, and yeah, I mean it's it's a good place for you to uh, discuss with us our changes and everything. So anyway, um, I was just going to talk a little bit about pulling in the new era with LD and BTS. Uh, I already sort of said right, it's not worth it to pull for a challenge quest. Uh, I do think it's worth it to pull when, if you have the tickets and you want the weapon that uh, that's on the, on the banner. Like for example, Garland, I would love to have Garland. I don't have his EX. I didn't pull him first time around. Uh, I didn't pull much at all in early chaos. Uh, I, I used support heavy characters, um, but I, uh, Garland is seems like a really fun character that works with a lot of characters on my roster, like like Quistus and Kefka. I both love both. I have both of them fully sphered. So Garland working really well with both of them. Yeah, I'd I'd love to pull Garland. And the fact that I have Sephiroth at thirty five, I have his thirty five CP, not MLB, and I have his EX. I would I would love to pull pull that banner to get some more EX limit breaks or some thirty fives just to get more power stones. I actually have one power stone right now. So I think it's worth it to do that. Uh, I do think your tickets belong best on the protagonist banners. With the advent of Squall's rework on the start dash banner in JP, we can see that the, the devs are going to push the protagonists and the main antagonists quite a bit. Um, Emperor is also getting a rework in JP. And so considering that that that's going to be happening, it's a pretty safe bet to dump tickets uh, for any of the initial BT banners. Uh, and that gives you synergy for three weeks. Does that mean that you are committed? Hey, I pulled Squall's BT, so I'm going to make sure that I do Garland's uh, quest and Amid Italian's quest. No, don't. You don't have to look at it like that, especially those. They're pretty tight, right? There's only four synergy characters on uh, on Garland, you've got to use three of them. So, uh, it gets a little, a little tight there. Uh, I personally am going to first try, uh, just doing it with, uh, with Squall who I, I have his burst and, uh, uh, Warrior of Light and Sephiroth at zero three. Um, so yeah, it should be, uh, it should be pretty, pretty interesting, I think. Uh, but it's it's really not appropriate, or I don't think it's appropriate for you to dump resources for a challenge quest. You're getting three dollars worth of a burst token. Who cares? Uh, there's gonna there's gonna be plenty more, um, and that's equivalent to about eleven thousand gems. So if you're like I'm gonna I'm gonna pull, uh, and you end up doing three multis, even that is a is a is sort of a waste. But um, you should be pulling with. Uh, gems first, uh, unless you are only intending to use tickets. So like Garland, I'm going to use 300 tickets. If I don't get his LD, no worries. I walk away. Uh, but if you, uh, go and, and throw tickets first, trying to luck sack, I mean, you're just increasing the, uh, high, it, it you're, you're basically just gambling at that point. Uh, if you gem first, like let's say for a mid-Italian, and you gem the banner and you get neither LD or EX, it's pretty low chance that happens, but it's still reasonable. Um, you can you can go ahead and use tickets uh, from there, and whichever one you get first, EX or LD, you can uh, pity the other one. And that's a pretty efficient use of resources, I think, in this current era. Uh, if you absolutely must have the LD, uh, then just use gems. Totally use gems. Don't worry uh, about trying to luck sack something because as someone with over way over a thousand tickets, the power of saving tickets and throwing 
huge amounts of tickets at a banner to basically make sure that you get what you want with like a, you know, within generally like 80 to 90% certainty. That's, that's great. It's a good feeling. Uh, and it, I just feel like it promotes a healthy uh, relationship with the game itself. Because if you build really unhealthy habits in the game, uh, it means you're going to have less fun. Uh, and it, especially in gotchas, that's very likely to happen. So I really think people should be gemming first, then ticketing or just ticketing. Um, and if you absolutely need, like for example, like right now in JP, uh, Celis is getting her, just got her LD. Sarah is likely to get her LD uh, soon after uh, in the same month. And then the next burst is probably Terra. And anyone that has watched my channel knows how much I love all three of those characters. They're all getting pitied. That's 350,000 gems that I want to make sure. I'll link our resource planner in the description. I actually just updated it up to Ult uh, Divine Ramu. So you will be able to plan out all of your pulls from now for the next, well, until April 2021. Uh, and I hope that I've been keeping it up to date on a very regular basis for people. Uh, just so that they can constantly uh, keep track of their resources and again, have a pretty healthy relationship with the game. Um, that's that's what's important. Um, so yeah, uh, other than other than that, uh, oh, the Mog Pass, please. If uh, first play the game as you like. Uh, if you're not farming stuff, don't worry about the Mog Pass. It's not gonna help you uh, and it's not for you. But if you're farming all the content and you're pretty hardcore about uh, making sure your summon boards are maxed and you spend a lot of time playing the game and you enjoy it, uh, please just get the basic Mog Pass. I don't think the premium one's worth it, but the basic Mog Pass, there are a lot of people that pride themselves on being free to play. And sure, free to play is great. I don't spend much money at all on this game. I have a couple costumes, that's, uh, that's about it. Um, the, the whole notion of skipping something just so you can keep your badge of free to play honor. Yeah, that means that if you're not getting the $5 Mog Pass, you're basically valuing your time at less than a dollar an hour. Uh, and again, if you like the game and you're not just playing it casually every so often, uh, yeah, you're valuing your time at less, that is just so low, at less than a dollar an hour, every human, is worth more than a you know less than a dollar an hour because um, you're gonna save about five five to ten hours per summon board. So like I plan to get the Mog Pass next uh, month uh, for Odin. The month after I probably won't get it. I'll see if I need the extra character points. But yeah, that's that's sort of about it. Um, yeah. Uh, other, other than that stuff, go listen to the TCC podcast, especially the post show. Post show's hilarious. <laughs> I guess joined uh, yesterday. I thought it was an amazing show. We did. We covered so much ground and got to have a lot of interesting conversations, a lot of different viewpoints. That's why I like the podcast so much. So I think that that's that's definitely uh, a good a good watch. And the post show is just ridiculous. <laughs> so uh, we had a lot of fun with it. Um, uh, yeah, it. I think the podcast is uh, is always good for that. Uh, prop shout out to Ricky. Ricky did the TCC challenge extreme. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, the extreme challenge was uh, no Eldnarsh friend. Basically, there were a few other banned units, but basically in Trey Chaos you couldn't get broken, and he actually finished Trey Chaos without getting broken with versus guaranteed breaks. It's amazing. Um, I'll link that run also in the uh, in the description. But yeah, I hope you all have sort of enjoyed watching watching this run um, uh, here. These characters are, yeah, they are forever locked in this stage. I'm never rerunning it. Uh, and I've only rerun, I've only run this stage twice now. I never needed to reset or anything. It's pretty awesome. Uh, it went, uh, went really, uh, really well. Um, thankfully you can see though, the turns are still really high. 130 is where you need to go, but how better to dedicate this to dreamy than finishing with a dice roll. Anyway, 
Hope you guys all enjoyed. I'm going to be doing Entropy 2 shortly also. But uh, yeah, take care. Have a good day and a good weekend.